what's up guys we are still talking about what is going on uh what is trending in nigerian politics uh greetings to you wherever you are so i have uh the video i am about to share with you peter will be speaking about uh the nature of the nation what is going on in nigeria sorry i will share the video for you guys i just want to express or give my own personal opinion of course peter will be is already aware um what is going on in nigeria <laughs> i am trying to imagine how some people will survive in the next seven years or should i say seven years plus because it is biting hard like seriously it is biting hard now this time around it doesn't want to know if you are rich or if you are poor of course the politicians the elite uh they are the one mostly benefiting from the government uh that is the reason why they didn't want peter b to come in because they knew that most of the loophole what is going on uh peter b wouldn't have condoned it talking about a typical example signing of uh, billions of naira to buy uh, rechargeable fund for the government of course i'm talking about this uh, lagos state government i mean buying of presidential yacht that is not necessary all those who are the people they bring behind all this who sign it is it that nobody is there to give these people advice or they only want to take advantage of the small opportunity they see you understand let me not waste much of your time and allow you to listen to what peter will be have to say if you have anything to contribute put it down in the comment section below meant well in formation and participating in that direction. So it's a welcome development. And I believe that it's helped in the past because you look, you look at those who fought for our independence and everything, they were in different political party formations and was able to show that first uh, democratic process in Nigeria, which is what we are all clamoring that we need to go back to now, where we have very enterprising, progressive regional governments striving very well. Thank you, sir. So as a critical stakeholder, what is your advice to the party advice council and to ensure democracy growth in Nigeria? Well, as it is today, my advice is that the parties come together and work for the people. You could see today there's a, 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 a gradual erosion of the tenets of democracy. Our political compass is heading in the wrong direction. So there's a need for the parties to come together to be able to rescue the situation as it is today. Okay, sir. So the final question. So what advice do you have to for Nigerians, especially the electorate? Well, for for Nigerians, well, which is for all of us, we need to take issue of governance very serious. We need to ensure that only those who are competent, who have the capacity, who have the integrity to be able to serve faithfully and use the resources of the nation effectively for production, are allowed into office and supported. And we should resist where things are going wrong. This question, which is the issue of the parties coming together, that is impossible. You're talking about coming together for election purpose. That's not what I'm talking. I'm talking about coming together for good governance and making sure that the, the people are well governed and well served. That's two different things. When it is for election purpose, it is, it is, it is self, for self-benefit or transactional. But if it is for good governance, we can all come together and work together. And if you look at what President Obasanjo is talking about, I don't think he 
he's talking again, saying that democracy is not what we should adopt. No, he's talking about the applicability. Democracy, as is being practiced in the Western world, does not have universal acceptability and applicability. You have to look at what suits you. For example, if you look at democracy in America, where we even copy this presidential system of government, there's so many things that we've abandoned. If you today you're president of America, you can't just, you know, I've never heard in America that they bought vehicles for legislators. You can't just buy cars anyhow. I have never heard you can't buy cars for first lady anyhow. Yes, there's no, in fact in America, there's no office called office of first lady. It exists in name. And for the purpose of accompanying the president to trips, not just to have an office created with enormous budgets that are even beyond critical areas of development. No, you cannot entertain people. In America, if the president chooses today, to entertain guests, you pay for the food. If he chooses to have different dishes, he will pay for it. So he can decide how oh, my wife is going to have uh, this. Uh, we're going to have lo this type of fish from Japan. At the end of the month, he has to pay for it. So these things don't happen. You don't have renovations of of different houses for the president. You know, if the president of America goes to New York today, he says in hotel, I've accompanied the president to cheap in the past. The hotel is the president of America was staying in a hotel. So these are issues. So we must look at what suits us. Again, look at how we can manage our own expense and everything. So what about Andrew is saying that we must not adopt this and even adopt it wrongly as we are doing it today. The last one was an issue of moving That is a disaster. And it can be savage again by the same everybody coming together. Not just now political parties, but civil society. The people must resist that because it's dangerous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is, uh, you are the campaigner of a new Nigeria. And recently you described the uh, former president, Atipa Baka, as your leader. If, for example, in 2027, and you are given the opportunity to become this vice, will you do that? Then, secondly, my dear, let's not talk about the election. We have a critical problem happening now. We, you see, this is what I'm saying. We should all come together. Even you as a journalist should look beyond the election. People are dying of hunger. And we're talking about the election. What happens in the next election? I said this publicly. P2B is not desperate to be Nigerian president. And desperate to see Nigeria work. Your children are suffering. So don't ask me that type of question, please. I'm begging you. Let's talk about how to save the country. If the country is working, I mustn't be president. Let the country work for our future. Okay. I want the children of here to be looked after. Okay, uh, the next one is, you said that uh, Nigeria should try to resist uh, those who want to stop the good governance of Nigeria. But where is the last election? We watch the exercise. We know that a lot of Nigerians supported you and they voted for you. But at the end, in, in this kind of scenario, how do Nigerians... They continue to voice it out and say, this is not what we expected. It has to be consistent. And we, I'm not saying they should go and start destroying things. We must remain civil and within the law. But consistently say, no to bad governance. Yes, <laughs> uh, good evening. I report for Nigeria. Let's go back to IPAC. 
Would you say IPAC as the umbrella body of all political parties in Nigeria has lived up to this expectation? If no, what would be your recommendation? How do you think IPAC can get it better for us to have the democracy we are all aiming for? IPAC should go beyond being transactional and be effective in collectively opposing bad governance. That is their role. That is why they are formed, to say no when these are going wrong. And everybody can see today that these are going wrong in our country. It doesn't need to be told. We now have a situation where non-party car carrying members have been appointed to be a referee in our coming elections. IPAC, civil society, and the people need to resist that. These are even some of them who have been part of Togre and are becoming the referees. IPAC should voice out where 90% of our election now ends up in court. They should voice out where our courts have become cause of favors, cause of procurement, rather than cause of justice and the law. They should voice out where you have three recent judgments that are contradictory. Look at what is happening in Kanu, Zamfara, and Plateau. All geared through opposition parties. I don't need to be a member of those parties to say that things are wrong. They are wrong. They are not good for democracy. My party is not in any of them. But it shouldn't be. Look at the elections that have happened recently. In Kogi and everything, nobody is talking about the people who were killed, people who were men, and everything. Everybody is saying congratulations to something you know that was wrong. That's where IPAC, civil society, and everybody should voice out. It's not about who it benefits today or tomorrow. I've said it before, nobody is buying fuel cheaper. Nobody is buying food cheaper. If anybody knows where it's cheaper, for either one party or the other, show me so we can go there and buy. I want to ask, perhaps it is time for the structuring. Nigerians have been talking about restructured for a while now and looking at everything that is happening, do you think that perhaps this is the time, you know, to begin to go beyond talking about restructuring and actually coming together to hold a kind of maybe confab or conference? I said it last in my last conference that we need it immediately. Because we need to talk. We need to show like I said at the beginning of this Conference that we are our compass is headed in the right, wrong direction. And if we don't do anything, it will consume everybody. And I keep consuming everybody. Some people will think today they are benefiting or because it's this. No. In a situation where you have a looming crisis and we're playing about it, we've been warned of we're going to face hunger next year. We are using almost 100% of our revenue to service debt, and nobody can say what, how we pay the debt, what we use it for. In a place where, instead of putting our money, we've now been told we are bankrupt. Instead of now behaving like people who are bankrupt, we are seen behaving like people who are still affluent. Because bankrupt people, should be now be downsizing all expenditures that is not critical for development. 
but we are still going ahead, <coughs> living a life that is beyond our resources, even when borrowing to continue such life. So the things we need to do, all these things are things we need to look at. We need this time to look at whether this presidential system suits us or whether we can change and go back to the parliamentary system. Because we cannot have a situation, and that's what Ambassador Joe is saying. Let's have something that can suit us, whether we, it's parliamentary or presidential. It is time that we elect people who must be answerable to us. We can no longer continue to have an elected people who answer us through third parties or source comments to us and everything. It cannot continue. We need to do things differently. So I think the structuring one will help the various segments to develop simultaneously. And you, you will see it happen. Thank you, Thank you for your time. <laughs>